When Siri came out on the iPhone 10 years ago, it took the world by storm. I actually remember sitting around the table with my family, asking questions like, how far is the Earth from the Sun? Or what's the mass of Jupiter? It wasn't quick though, till the novelty did start to wear off. In recent years, however, AI assistants have again been gaining quite a bit of traction. To give an example, Amazon's Alexa alone has sold over 100 million units, and those were the stats as of two years ago. So today I wanna to talk about how these AI assistants work and also a little bit of a poorly kept secret that these AI assistants really aren't that smart. And this is all stuff I know because I've actually worked in this field personally. I've worked on Google Assistant at Google and Alexa while at Amazon. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, I won't actually be able to talk about specific details because, you know, don't wanna get sued for millions of dollars. However, I can talk about general ideas that really apply to almost all AI assistants. And I can also talk about how I would go about making an AI assistant if I was starting my own from scratch. So stick around if that sort of thing interests you and also consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to get notifications if you like this sort of AI and ML content that I post a lot of on this channel. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting from all of you. To start off, let's break down what AI assistants do into three separate steps. The first step is going to be filtering and formatting the audio command from the user. The second is going to be understanding the intent behind that command. And the third step is going to be executing an action based on the intent. Starting with option number one, filtering and formatting the audio command, we actually have, especially with recent developments in ML, a few options here. Now the first option is going to be an end-to-end -end approach where we take in audio on one side and we run that through model and go all the way to the action that comes out on the other side or some sort of intent, an end-to-end -end approach. Now option number two is that we take the audio and from that we first convert it into text. So if I was to say, hello world, it would convert my audio into text. And that process is called automatic speech recognition or ASR for short. On one hand, we have the end-to-end -end approach, which is a lot less steps and a lot simpler overall. You just put in audio and you get out in action. Now the problem is that it's a lot harder to implement and we lose out on a lot of the options or customizability options that we would have otherwise had if we first converted our speech into text with ASR. For example, if we use ASR first, some of the benefits we get are being able to enter text commands directly instead of always having to speak. Another benefit is that if all your commands are in text, it's a lot easier to store them and use them for debugging because you can filter through them and search for specific things, whereas that's a lot harder to do with audio. Another issue is that if you're going directly from audio to the end stage, well, audio, when you speak, you can have a lot of different variations of saying the same thing. For example, you have different accents or different ways of saying certain words. And while technically you are gonna be dealing with that either way, if you do ASR first, you're at least narrowing down the problem to a certain portion of your stack instead of having to deal with it throughout. And the last thing I'll mention is that if you want to do some sort of classical AI, for example, parsing with grammar rules or anything like that, well, that's a lot easier when you have text. You can't do that directly with audio. And that's just a small list of the many benefits that come with first doing an explicit ASR step. So if I was going to build my own AI assistant and I had the time, I would definitely go for using ASR and then handling everything else in later steps. Now, in terms of the details of implementation here and how you could go about doing this, well, there are a number of ways, so I don't want to get too into the depths here, but one common way to do this is by using supervised learning, where you get a bunch of examples of audio and then a bunch of examples of corresponding text, and you train something like a recurrent neural network to match the audio segment to the text segment. After we've completed an ASR step, we can move on to step two, which is understanding what the user is saying or specifically the intent behind what the user is saying. One example that I think illustrates this difference very well is the bring me to downtown example. So imagine a user says to their assistant, bring me to downtown. Now, as a human, we can probably infer that that person doesn't actually mean for the assistant to grow legs and piggyback ride them to downtown. That, you know, isn't very realistic. <laughs> In reality, their intent is probably to get directions. So that is something that we need to be able to infer or have our agent 
or have our assistant be able to infer. On top of that, we would also need to be able to understand that downtown is a location and it's probably somewhere near the user. So just like with the first step of this whole process, there are actually two options, again, that we can use here. The first option is again going to be an end-to-end -end sort of approach where we put in text and we get out the final action or the final action is just executed. Now, this is a lot harder, but to give an example, you can think of someone saying, go to google.com or bring me to google.com. In this example, we would pair these text of bring me to google.com with an example or some sort of recording of an actual human going to google.com. And then we would have a neural network learn from this text, we want to map that to this sort of action. And that would be an end-to-end -end process. And while this is really nice because, you know, what we can do is only limited by our training examples, there are a large number of complications here. One is the fact that this is just very difficult. You have to set up a whole schema for how the actions work and how that can be done by a neural network. Not to mention your assistant could also end up doing quite a bit of harm if it's connected to, say, a device like a phone. For example, it could delete some of your contacts, send emails to random people, or it could even you know, send some of the money from your bank account to random people if you have your bank connected to your phone. So while the idea of going end to end from text to action is very nice and maybe something we could do in the future, it's just too difficult and too risky for most people to want to take that approach nowadays. So it's not something I would generally recommend. What you tend to see a lot more of the time is a second option where you're mapping the text to an intent. Now, in this case, the intent for take me to downtown might be the give directions intent. And I'm just giving this as an example. If we have the give directions intent, it might also come with a few parameters. For example, if you want to give directions, you might have a location parameter, where in this case, we would need to map the location parameter to the value of downtown, as the user said. And then finally, we would also need to take downtown and have some sort of location resolver to figure out where downtown actually was. Now, these problems of intent recognition and filling in these parameters are actually formal problems with names. So for intents, we have intent recognition or classification. And then for the location parameter, that's called slot filling, where a slot is essentially just a parameter of the intent. Now, again, the way you can do intent recognition or slot filling, the ways are really numerous, and I don't want to go into the details of implementation in this video, but in the description of the video, I will link a few places where you can figure out what the state-of-the-art methods are for doing this sort of thing if you're curious to look that up yourself. With that out of the way, we can finally move on to step three, the final step in this process, which is to actually execute the action. So going back to the example of take me to downtown, if we want to take the user to downtown, the action we execute might be to interface with the Google Maps API, find downtown, and then pull up a map for the user. Another example in the case of bring me to google.com might be to open up a Chrome or Firefox window and then populate the search bar with google.com and hit search. This is really the easiest step here, especially because we're working with a system where we already have predefined intents. We can have pre-programmed actions for each of those intents. For this final step, it's really just a matter of getting the programming done. That's really all there is to how these systems work. Now I am leaving out some details, but that's sort of the dirty secret of these AI assistants. And it's that they're really kind of stupid. They're not doing any really smart thing to figure out what it is you want. There is a little bit of deep learning involved, but really the majority of what's happening is a whole bunch of if statements and conditionals and just these absolute forests of these if statements duct taped together in a sort of fancy way to make it look kind of nice to be able to do all these different things. I could even make my own AI assistant if I really wanted to, and that's actually a video I'm considering making, so do let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in seeing. But the reason that these companies have these massive teams of hundreds of people to make these AI assistants is not because they're doing some super fancy tech thing, and to be fair, there is a bit of deep learning, and there are some cases where there's some cool machine learning going on, but the real reason there's so many people is usually because they need to account for all these different scenarios by writing all these specialized cases for if you want to get the weather, if you want to get directions, if you want to go to a website, if you want to find something from Wikipedia, 
There's just all these different conditionals that are throwing you down all these pre-programmed branches. In the future, I do think we will improve the ways to do this, and I think eventually we will be able to do the end-to-end -end methods I talked about, where you start with just the audio or the text, and you go all the way to the action that needs to be done. And once we can do that, I think we will see a huge new wave of popularity with AI assistance because the possibilities at that point will really become endless for what they're able to do. We are still a ways away from that, but if you want updates on that sort of content or any sort of other AI, ML content, anything like this, or you wanna see me make my own AI assistant on this channel, do consider subscribing. It really means a lot to me. Anyway, that's all I have for this time. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you next time.